The Chiefs do what the Chiefs do best. They find a way to win. In overtime, Patrick Mahomes secured another Kansas City dub with a walk-off touchdown by none other than Kareem Hunt. The reigning Super Bowl champs remain perfect on the season and get ready for another home game on a short week. And oh, did I mention it is the trade deadline today. We're going to discuss all things Kansas City Chiefs now. What is up, Chiefs Kingdom? Happy Tuesday. I'm Haley Lewis, and this is Chiefs News Daily. Happy Victory Tuesday, might I add. The Chiefs keep the train rolling undefeated through eight this season to make a total streak of 14 wins in a row dating back to New Year's Eve of last season. So we got plenty to break down from last night's win as Kansas City gears up for another division opponent this coming week. First, give us a like and subscribe right here on the KCSN YouTube channel, and let's get into it. To a rainy Arrowhead Stadium we go. Kansas City back home hosting the 4-4 Tampa Bay Bucks heading into Monday Night Football. The Bucks won the coin toss and elected to defer, so Patrick Mahomes and company were up first as the rain subsided just in time for kickoff. One important note, the Bucks huddled on the Chiefs logo midfield before team introductions. Classy. Moving on. On the opening drive, Xavier Worthy appeared to have caught a beautiful downfield pass that would have landed the Chiefs on the one-yard line. However, the rookie's feet did not stay in bounds, and the buzzkill resulted in a sack on Mahomes two plays later, and Kansas City had to punt it away on their opening drive. So Baker Mayfield stepping onto the field for the first time. Just Reed almost pulling off an incredible interception, and then the pass rush later sealed the deal, forcing Tampa Bay to punt on their opening drive as well. The Chiefs offense stepped back onto the field and DeAndre Hopkins picked up 25 yards on back-to-back -back receptions. After a blown reverse to Worthy, the Chiefs settled for a 40-yard field goal and took the 3-0 lead, much thanks to Harrison Bucker. A holding call on the Chiefs took back a beautiful sack by George Karloftis and into the second quarter we go. Tampa Bay kept their foot on the gas. The Kansas City native ran it in for a touchdown and the Bucks took the 7-3 advantage. Now White actually graduated from Center High School, if you didn't know that. On Kansas City's next drive, Mahomes was sacked, but able to recover, connecting with Justin Watson, then DeAndre Hopkins, who came down with it on the three-yard line. Mind you, Hopkins was in triple coverage making that play. After two run attempts fell short, Mahomes found Hopkins in the end zone for his first touchdown as a Chief and his first tutty at Arrowhead Stadium. Kansas City goes up 10-7. Mayfield felt the pressure in the Bucks' next drive. Karloftis came up with a sack, followed by big pressure bought by the Chiefs' newest edge rusher, Josh Shea. Kansas City was back on the field with the ball as the two-minute warning hit. Momentum died, though, after the ball was stripped from Travis Kelsey, and Tampa Bay got one more chance before the half. Now, the Chiefs' defense held strong. They forced the Bucks to punt, giving Kansas City about 30-ish seconds before halftime. The Chiefs tried to get into field goal position, but the Bucks sacked Mahomes again, and the clock fizzled out. At the half, 10-7, Kansas City on top. All right, to the third quarter, we go after a big return on the kickoff and a horse collar penalty against Joshua Williams. The Bucks found the end zone. Kate Otten picked up an 11-yard pass to give Tampa Bay the lead, 14-10 Bucks. Now, the Chiefs couldn't return the favor, and they went three and out. Mahomes sacked again. Mainfield drove downfield, but Kansas City's defense at least held the Bucks out of the end zone. Tampa Bay tacked on three more points to make it 17-10, a one-score lead after that field goal. Let's head to the fourth quarter now. Kansas City looking for an answer. Now, Mahomes made it happen, showing off his playmaker abilities by throwing the ball over the Bucks defenders to Samaj P. Ryan for a touchdown, all while scrambling. But during the play, Mahomes appeared to have hurt his ankle slash knee in a non-contact injury, which is never a good sign. The quarterback was helped to the sideline. He returned. We'll have more on that injury later. Chiefs even it out at 17 all with just about 14 minutes left in the game. Now the Bucks punted the ball back to Kansas City on their next drive. The Chiefs leaned on the run game, setting them up in scoring position. On third and goal, Mahomes found Hopkins for his second touchdown of the night. Touchdown Kansas City, the home team, making a 24-17 with just a few minutes left in the game. The Bucks again punted the ball back to the Chiefs with less than three minutes to go. So all Kansas City had to do was snag a first down, get to the two-minute warning, run out the clock. But that is not at all what happened. On third down, Kansas City quite literally dropped the ball and had to punt back to Tampa Bay, giving the Bucks a little too much time. With 30 seconds left in regulation, Ryan Miller caught a one-yard pass from Mayfield, and the Bucks 
did not go for two. Instead, they kicked the PAT, tying it up at 24 all. Kansas City wasn't able to get into field goal position as the clock ran out. They actually punted it back to Tampa Bay, and we are headed to overtime, ladies and gents. In OT, the Chiefs won the coin toss. To start with the ball, the combination of Kelsey, Hopkins, and Hunt kept the Chiefs seamlessly moving down the field. It looked effortless. Hunt sealed the deal with a two-yard touchdown run for the walk-off win. In overtime, Kansas City won 30-24, to the Chiefs remaining undefeated. That win marks eight in a row on the season and 14 games in a row dating back to last season, a first in franchise history. After the game, Kareem Hunt spoke in the locker room about his walk-off tutty. Here are also a few more post-game clips from the pressers after last night's victory. I heard the play call and I knew it was only one option to get in there and leave no doubt. And it was like pretty much a walk-off home run. I, I I don't think I felt that before. It was fun, man. It was it was fun. I ain't been in an overtime game like that close in a long time. And, you know, game winning TD, I can't complain. A lot more comfortable. Uh, coaches do a great job of getting me prepared. Uh, I think it's not just, you know, Connor, but everybody uh, on the offensive side. You know, everybody's always testing me, asking me questions, you know, just seeing, seeing my knowledge of the offense as we go. And a, a blessing. Uh, you know, I'm grateful to, uh, to be here. So, uh, you know, I'm still taking it in. Uh, you know, I, I believe in, in, in God, uh, you know, in prayer, uh, manifestation. So uh, just taking it in, man. Um, and so to be able to have him down the red zone, third down situations, he does a good job of filling out and finding those windows. Um, he's he kind of like Travis does. Uh, I think as he as he figures out the, the whole entire offense, he'll get even better because there's sometimes he's going places. I'm like, man, you, there, there's play, there's a time and a place for that. But um, that's what makes him great. And then you give him a chance down the field and he makes a play. It goes from a, a play where it might have been a bad decision to a, a big time catch. First of all, he's smart and he's got a lot of experience. So. Uh, we put more in for him this week, and you know Connor. Connor does a nice job with those guys of getting them ready and ready to go. So, uh, but DeAndre is a veteran player that's a smart guy. So that's I, I put most of it right there. As far as injuries go, McCole Hardman tweaked his right shoulder after a big return in the first quarter. He was questionable to return but later came back in. Defensive linemen George Karloftis and Turk Wharton were both banged up and seemed to be tangled after the same play in the third quarter. Both players did return to the field after head coach Andy Reid shared that Turk tweaked his right knee. That's actually the opposite knee he had ACL surgery on and Karloftis hurt his hip area. The big one that has most people talking though is Patrick Mahomes, who awkwardly landed on his right ankle in the fourth quarter. Now the QB was helped off the field as the crowd roared and cheered for the back-to-back -back champ who did enter the blue medical tent. However, he did return on the very next possession to the field and he continued to play the remainder of the game. Now, after we learned that head coach Andy Reid told Mahomes on the sideline he was going to remove him from the game, but the QB, as usual, wasn't having it. Reed shared that he even told Carson Wentz to get ready. Now, Mahomes got to share his side of the story at the podium as well, saying it was the same ankle he rolled last week against the Raiders, which is what originally really scared the QB. Mahomes injured his same ankle back in 2022 during a playoff victory against the Jacksonville Jags. Coach Reed did pull Mahomes from that contest, even after the quarterback protested, but Coach Reed wouldn't allow Patrick back into the game until he had gotten an x-ray done. However, the back-to-back -back champ says this time it is a little bit different. Quote, the one in the playoffs a couple of years ago was a little bit of how I got tackled, he explained. It got stuck and hurt a lot more. Now this time I could move, I could still have mobility in my ankle, and I still do after the game. I probably get a little swelling tomorrow, but with a short week, you go in there and take care of it and be prepared to play the next week. Also, a few notes to bring you from over the weekend, if you might have missed it, tight end Jared Wiley popped up as limited after Friday's practice. It was later learned on Saturday that the rookie actually tore his ACL and he's out for the remainder of the season. Now, the injury apparently happened in practice on Friday, according to head coach Andy Reid. Later on Saturday afternoon, the Chiefs announced that they have signed practice squad player tight end Peyton Hendershot to an active roster contract as well as a few other transactions. They signed tight end Anthony Fersker to the first pra or excuse me, to the practice squad and have also placed tight end Jared Wiley on the injured reserve. As we all know, today is the NFL trade deadline. That means that all trades must happen before 4 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Central time here in Kansas City on Tuesday. Any deal agreed upon must be submitted to the league office by then. However, trades can be reported after the deadline by the media 
as long as they were sent to the league office by that deadline. So the trade window will then be closed until March 12th of 2025. That is when the new league year trading window officially opens again. Now, the Chiefs decided to play it cool today. No trades were announced by the trade deadline, of course. Like I mentioned before, trades might be announced later on, so we'll continue to monitor. Alrighty, folks, that does it for another episode of Chiefs News Daily. As always, we'll be back tomorrow. In the meantime, like and subscribe right here on the KCSN YouTube channel. Have a great rest of your Victory Tuesday. We'll see you here on Wednesday.